Hey, hey, Intuitive Soul Tribe. Mel, Intuitive Coach here, excited to bring to you today's collective reading. Welcome back to my channel if you're returning and welcome if you're new. If you're interested in a personal reading, signing up for the monthly newsletter, or entering into the free reading giveaway, you can find all of that information in the description box below the video. I just heard happy birthday. So if you are celebrating a birthday, happy birthday to you today. I mean, some of you, if you're a Libra listening to this, you could be celebrating soon, but someone has a birthday today when you're listening to this reading. Now, I also see some upcoming travel for some of you. You could be booking a trip, planning some travel, I do see here exciting opportunities and times ahead. There is a new opportunity coming in here for you, Collective. You may be heading towards a new spiritual quest, okay? This could be heading on a new path for some of you. This could be relocating, traveling. Some of you are reaching people globally or internationally is what I'm picking up on. And you could even be taking a trip or booking a trip that you take later on, okay? Or it's something that you do now, but you're also gonna go back to this place again is what I'm picking up on, or you have been to this place or location prior. We have the empath showing up here for you. Now the empath is card 23 in this deck. The creator added on a few bonus major arcanas and the empath is one of them. Now when the empath shows up, this is all about empathy and compassion and kindness. It's also about boundaries because some of you, you felt emotionally exhausted. It almost feels like you've been exhausted. You're ready for a new opportunity to roll around here for you. But I'm also getting here it's important to prioritize yourself and your emotional well-being. So if some of you are thinking about leaving, exiting, or cutting ties with an old situation or a partnership or whatever's draining or exhausting your energy, now's the time. Libran season is all about balance, justice, and harmony. And even though these readings are timeless, for some of you, this is the month where you know, there are some new beginnings coming in. Eight of cups at the bottom of the deck. You see that Dorothy, you know, she's still in Kansas here with the eight of cups. But I feel like it's high time you chase some rainbows here is what I'm getting. Yeah, high priestess. There could even be something that you're keeping silent or something that your intuition is really guiding you or nudging you to do at this time collective. And you actually have the intuition card showing up next. So we're going to dive into what is this for you? What is this new path, this exciting time ahead that you are being guided to take here? We see your intuition is on, you know, on alert. There's a sense of staying vigilant here. But I'm also getting a lot of you are seeking answers. You may be meditating. We are in the midst of eclipse energy and really taking a new approach on a lot of different things going on in our lives. And I feel like that little voice within is getting louder and louder and louder. So it's time. Pay attention to the signs, the synchronicities, your dreams, not just your dreams, at night, but your daydreams. What are you thinking about during the day? You know, are you keeping your, your third eye chakra open? Because for some of you, you're thinking and dreaming about big things. And with the wheel of fortune here showing up, this is destined. This is destiny and fate. There's some form of, you know, cycle that you've completed and it's time to renew or re-up in some way, shape, or form. And I was just going to pull a timing card prior, but this is divine timing. I'm still going to pull a timing card. But the Wheel of Fortune is strong Sag energy. And this is about embracing, you know, embracing this turning point. It can be luck, destiny, and fate. And I feel like it's now, the time is now. You have the chariot, yeah. The chariot showing up at the bottom of the deck, another major arcana, king of swords in reverse. Some of you may be leaving behind an old belief system. This could be a person or a boss, 
King of Swords in reverse, he's not a fun person to play with, right? He is someone who's ruthless. He can come in and he's the, the gnat represented in this illustration. The gnats are pesky. They really sink their, you know, sink their teeth in and they suck that blood out. I know that sounds extreme, but it almost feels like you are getting rid of an energy that it just feels like it drained you. It took took the life out of you in some way, shape, or form with this King of Swords in reverse. And you're moving on from that. You're moving, you're moving on from that. And some of you, because you are the healer or you are the empath, you may have attracted a person or maybe this was a karmic bond, karmic cycle with the Wheel of Fortune. You may have attracted an individual or a situation or circumstance that was here to teach you about boundaries. And in order to do so, it would be difficult to do so having two empaths together, right? So it almost feels like the opposite of your energy needed to come in. Maybe an empath and a narcissist, right? Or, you know, an empath and, you know, someone who takes advantage of someone's kindness. And I feel like you learned some valuable lessons around this situation and now you're moving forward. Can we get a timing card here, Spirit? Maybe the timing of maybe when this shift had occurred or when it's going to complete. What do we need to know about time? Let's look at a timeline here. Because even though we have the Wheel of Fortune, which is divine timing, I want to know, uh, zone in on it a little bit. Okay, so there is something here that, all right, thank you. I'm getting two energies with the future card, a little bit off into the future, and then we have in a few months. It almost feels like something you have been working on for quite some time. It may feel like it's way off in the distance for you. Yeah, it, it almost feels like this is way off in the distance, like, oh, that's not going to happen for three more years, or, you know, I really want to retire, but that's so far out there. It almost feels like the chariot coming in here is saying, let's get back on track. Let's get back to a place where, you know, you're focusing on this career goal or this relationship goal or whatever your goal is or whatever inspires you. Because I actually see within a few months, you could be making some massive changes. This is divine timing, remember, with that wheel of fortune. It's as if the universe is working with you. Remember, spirit is your biggest manifesting partner. You co-create this life together. And I feel like the universe is creating things in the next few months that actually, <coughs> excuse me, shift that dream for you into the future. And it could even bring something in sooner rather than later, or it could change the dream in some way, shape or form. Okay. It could change the dream. But I feel I'm also getting cancer season here. Now, cancer season is June and July. Maybe that's when some sort of seeds were planted. Wheel of Fortune showing up, Sag energy. That would be a few months from now. Quite literally, Sag is November and December, and this is a few months. So I do see there's going to be a turn of the wheel and some massive changes by, before we hit 2025. Okay, so listen to your intuition because some of you are being guided to disconnect from this king of swords or again, a belief system. Instead of seeing things just black and white, instead of seeing things from the limitations of, of Kansas energy here, they're somewhere over the rainbow and I feel like you have a new opportunity ahead worth exploring. Now you also have the healing card showing up. Some of you, this may have to do with your health. Maybe there's some sort of surgery. This could be recovery. You may even be looking into some new programs and you know that it's not a quick fix, okay? Quick fix and maybe that's why between now and December is significant because you could be preparing for, you know, some form of healing or recovering if you've already had this. This could be Reiki. Some of you are Reiki masters or you are Reiki practitioners. This could also be health physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I do see some of you taking some new classes that could help you strengthen your intuition here or this could be on astrology. We have the high priestess. 
So it could be anything in the, the mystic realm uh, or the spiritual realm here. You're learning a little bit more about, you know, maybe your own emotions. Some of you, this is psychology. I'm getting like hypnotherapy. Some of you are, maybe even I'm getting EMDR. So EMDR or taking an alternative approach to health in some way, shape, or form. I feel good about this healing, but let's pull some, some cards here. Spirit, why is the healing card showing up for the collective? Why is the healing card? Oh, someone's going to get some answers. Okay, I see the messenger at the bottom of the deck. This is another ma uh, major arcana bonus card, card 22. It almost feels like after something was completed, there's a follow-up to say, hey, we're, we're just going to check in. So let's say for some of you, you've had surgery and you have to, you have a follow-up. I feel like there's going to be a follow-up that does um, bring in some sort of news that helps you move forward. So maybe you get the green light, you can go back to work or, you know, your the cancer is gone or, you know, I just feel like there's going to be a follow-up that allows you to move forward with that chariot. Some of you, there may have been a restriction to travel Maybe this has to do with visas. Perhaps this is global. We could see this over the next three months, perhaps something with travel. But I feel like there's going to be a sense of closure. And it feels like you already had closure in some way, shape, or form. But because this messenger is 22, so it comes after the, the world card, something may come back around. And I feel like you're like, well, I thought I already dealt with that, but it may come in to give you that final piece that you needed to really get that green light to go forward here. Spirit, why is the healing card showing up? Yeah, judgment. Judgment. Woo. Yep. This is face to face with something big. Uh, the judgment card is Scorpio. So we are seeing, you know, that Scorpio, Sagittarius, we're seeing the next three months playing out here. And there's going to be a judgment call being made. This is spiritual rebirth. It's life's purpose. It's self-awareness and a second chance here for you collective. So I, I do see some sort of second chance coming in because you've gone through the trials and tribulations. There's no going back. You're face to face with the Jabberwocky here, this big old dragon. And I feel like it requires you to let go of, you know, the journey that you were once on. And that's why that world feels so significant here. So I'm wondering if this is going to be some sort of world or ending that we see showing up here with the judgment. But this is about releasing judgments, re releasing the need to maybe at times judge oneself or judge a situation for, for what it, you know, I don't want to say for what it was, but I feel like we tend to hang on. We as humans, right, souls having this human experience, we tend to hang on. That is something we all do. We hang on because we try to avoid discomfort or pain in any way, even if that means that we're going to stay in some sort of discomfort or pain so we don't create more of it. But I feel like this is you letting go and redeeming oneself in some way, shape, or form. What do we have here? We have the hermit, two major arcanas. The hermit says that you've come to this judgment call because you've been doing the soul searching. You have been, you know, really going within and reflecting. This is enlightenment. And if you've withdrawn in some way, shape, or form in the recent past, or you've been rejected, this can be a sense of feeling lonely, sense of isolation. I feel like the judgment's coming in here saying, do you want to continue on this, this path moving forward? Or are we ready to get excited and put ourselves out there in some way, shape, or form? A lot of you are preparing for union or calling in a best friend. You are connecting to a community. You may be traveling, moving to a new location. <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel like there's something about you getting outside of your comfort zone because that's going to help you heal. Getting outside of the comfort zone is going to help you heal. Some of you, this has to do with the solar plexus chakra, feeling empowered. Some of you, this could be gut health, <clears throat> excuse me, gut health. I'm also getting the throat here feels a little bit activated as I'm clearing my throat. So perhaps this is thyroid. Okay, this can be adrenals. I'm getting adrenals here as well. And I feel like you're working on 
creating more vitality in your life and calling in people who support you, not this king of swords energy stuff. We don't, we don't want to see that king of swords in reverse. Spirit, can we get a little more insight into the collective stepping out of, I'm getting soul revival. That's pretty significant. It almost feels like you had to go inward to do some deep healing, to do some deep introspection because there has been uh, a lot of thinking, a lot of emotion as well around how to heal, how to heal financially, emotionally, physically, even spiritually. And I feel like you're coming face to face with something and you're going to open up to this new portal, this new path that feels a lot more authentic. This is what's at the bottom of the deck. And look at, you also have Wonderlust cards. So some of you are really taking your career or yourself, even your body image, the way you look. There's a shift happening here. And I feel like this is truly a new part of yourself being reborn. Again, soul revival. How significant is that? It feels like your soul coming back to life here in some way, shape, or form. I mean, some of you could even be going on a spiritual journey. Maybe you're thinking about, you know, going to the jungles, maybe going to Costa Rica, doing some ayahuasca, maybe visiting one of the seven wonders of the world, maybe going on a yoga retreat. You know, I just feel like you're being authentic to yourself and your dream. And that doesn't require, or I should say, it, it doesn't it's not you bringing this king of swords energy with you. Now, I don't know if this is a person, if this is a belief, if this is an old job, you know, you're going to know what this is for you. It's something that you don't want because it bugs you. The gnat bugs everyone, right? When it's in reverse and it won't stop buzzing in your ear and pestering you. I feel like you are also paying attention to your curiosities, paying attention to your intuition, because it almost feels like there's this nagging, um, and not that the intuition is nagging, but I feel like it's it's time for you to take action. And it almost feels like now, now is the, yeah, now is the right time. And what you do now is actually going to shape the next few months for you. And it's gonna bring in a big dream. Maybe, yes, it's a little bit further off in the future, but I feel like, the ultimate blessing, the Ten of Pentacles, the Ten of Cups, that could be a little further off into the future, but the abundant mindset, the healing, the awe, the wonder, the joy, all of the, the highs of our emotions, that can come in for you at any time, right? And I feel like you've already dealt with a lot of the lows with the hermit. Now it's time for you to trust in your unique vision. This is a sense of inner truth. For some of you, you are going to come face to face with a truth within yourself. That could be that judgment card. You may be saying, is this what I really want? Do I really want to be in this relationship? Do I really want to be in this job? Right? Um, do I really want to continue feeling lack of energy and overweight and, you know, drinking or smoking or whatever it may be? right? We all have something we're always trying to work on physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. But I feel like you're getting raw, you're getting real, and you're getting honest with yourself. I am getting seven of swords energy, but I see you are someone who is genuine collective. You're someone who is authentic and ethical. You are the real deal. And I feel with you stepping into your power here, you're going to attract your tribe. You're going to attract opportunities. This could be platonic relationships, lovers, you know, best friends. Some of you, this is pets uh, and animals. I feel like you're taking on this adventurous side no matter what age you are, right? No matter how much you've gone through. And it doesn't mean that you have to have, you know, tons of money to be able to do this. That could be that ultimate blessing or dream that you're hoping for down the road, right? But I feel like you taking action now is, it's all about the journey here. So I'm gonna take a look and clarify the authenticity. I am getting, again, that Seven of Swords, but what, what can... What can the collective do to truly live in this authenticity in the best way possible? Okay. Oh, we have the 
Eight of Swords and the Nine of Wands. So we have the Eight and the Nine. The Eight of Swords showing up here is the card of bravery, strength, and courage. You see that it's the King of the Forest. The Eight of Wands can be telling ourselves this, the same old story over and over. The Eight of Swords can be a martyr energy, a victim mentality, or we make excuses, right? We make excuses. We say, I can't, when what we really mean is I won't or I don't want to, right? And when when you say, when you switch up the verbiage, right? When you sw switch up the the way that you speak, it actually allows you to feel more empowered. Instead of saying, I can't, uh, that's not going to, you know, it's not going to work for me. I can't. Instead say, I don't want that. Or, you know, I, I do want that. Really being decisive with your, with your thoughts and with your goals and saying yes when it's a soul yes and saying no if it's a soul no and being determined enough to go after what it is that you want and not being being sidetracked or distracted by that fear or old beliefs that hold you in place. Because Eight of Swords can be feeling trapped, feeling restricted. It can be needing to face some fears. Yes, you may have questioned your potential, but when you have the Nine of Wands here as your potential, you are a warrior. You are determined. There's nothing that you cannot do. Even if this scares you, it's going to scare you because it's, you know, it's a new chapter. If it didn't scare you, it'd be crazy, right? But you don't have to let that fear hold you back. And that's what I feel for some of you. You know, if you want something, say yes. If it's, if it's not a priority or if it's not something that aligns with what you truly want, then say no, cut it out, right? And I feel like there's been a little bit of that wishy-washy energy and that's why you have the authenticity card because the true nature of it is that you are strong, that you are courageous, that you are brave. The true nature of it is that you're not trapped. Eight of Swords can be trapped in some sort of mental imprisonment. We've all done it. We've all, you know, got in our head about a situation and started weaving up a story that didn't even exist, right? Oh, they're five minutes late or they didn't call or I'm not going to get that job. I would have heard from them or, you know, they're standing me up. They should have met me at this time, right? We start to, we start to weave stories that are illusions, we let the mind really take off in sometimes a very scary direction. And authenticity is saying here, wait a second, you have this unique vision. Don't let the shadows creep in. You're showing up as the strength, as the king of the forest here. Use that bravery that you have. Stand in your courage. Stand in your power. Be determined. Be the fierce warrior that you are. Because you're going to overcome obstacles. Because you have the strength to do so. To set boundaries. To navigate through the external hurdles and I do see here a renewed sense of determination coming in for you and that may be what the next three months is all about all right final outcome here let's get one card for final outcome what does collective need to know oh the best the best outcome when I created this deck I had all of the best energies of tarot in mind right the sun the ten of pentacles ten of uh, Ten of Cups, but also the strength behind it to be able to move towards those dreams because we're not going to just get there by it landing in our lap. We need the strength to overcome obstacles, to face fears head on and to push through it, right? So that's what you're doing here with the bliss. You're creating a heaven on earth for yourself, collective. You are creating this happiness within yourself. Some of you are even moving to or heading towards more sunshine. This can be heading towards more happiness in your life. And can we take a moment just to, uh, just to send some prayers? As I seen sunshine, spirit directed me to my, uh, my shirt, which says Florida, the sunshine state. So if we can just take a moment to, to push out all of the, the loving, healing, powerful prayers and energy to Florida just for a moment. All right. Bliss is about joy. Freedom. It's the yes card. It's wish fulfillment. And it's also about coming together here. Coming together despite all odds being against or racking up. It feels for some of you, it's like all odds have defied you or racked up against you. And you're like, when? 
when Mel, when is this going to happen? It's, it's taking forever. And even though this may feel like it's a dream way off in the future, you may not see the change that is taking place behind the scenes because your final outcome is the bliss. There is something magical happening here for you. There is a wish fulfillment coming in here for you collective. What do we need to know about this wish? And I just heard patience, temperance. Oh my goodness, I'll take this one. This, what did I just say? The, the cards that really connect to this energy, you have the 10 of cups. And we have no way, we have the lion in the background. We said the strength, right? This is the yellow brick road. We all, each and every one of us are navigating the path on earth. This is our yellow brick road that we're on. And we're constantly going to come to crossroads. We're constantly going to come up to, you know, some of the, the witch energy. And, you know, hopefully none of the, the trees that are going to throw apples back at you. But sometimes, you know, we need that, that strength of the lion, right? We need that the intellect of, of the mind. And we need the heart of the tin man. And you actually see here, and this is so beautiful and interesting, it actually looks like um, the Wicked Witch next to her, standing there, even though that may be the Scarecrow. I don't think it is. It almost looks like the Wicked Witch embarking upon this path. And it feels like you are facing, you're bringing those fears with you, right? Or you're bringing, I don't want to say you're bringing them with you, but it, it feels like you're making friends with those fears, and you're saying, wait a second, I don't have to run from it. I don't have to run from the, the, the obstacles or the parts of myself that maybe you have ran from collective. This is big because this brings us to that authentic piece is loving all of you, even the parts of you at times that are challenging or hard to love. You have all the tools, right? That's why we have, you know, heart. That's why we have the brains. That's why we have, you know, what we have to be able to be equipped and deal with whatever life, you know, throws at us, whatever has been part of our, our blueprint, our divine blueprint to learn and grow and evolve with. The 10 of cups is the ultimate blessing. And I feel like it's the journey Yes, there's a rainbow up here, but the journey is actually the blessing. You know, it's where at the end of our lives here on earth, right? Or we can look back and say, wow, this was a life well lived. I was able to, you know, accomplish my dreams. I was able to live out what I wanted to, to experience and explore and, you know, fall in love again or help people or be of service or travel the world, whatever your dreams are collective, do not give up because they're right here. Believe in yourself. I do. That is what I have for you collective. I hope that resonates. I hope that was helpful. If so, please hit that thumbs up button. It certainly helps get the divine channeled messages out there to those that need it most. I am sending all of you so much love. I want you to feel inspired to trust in your intuition, your own intuition, because as things change in the world, we're going to need to be able to trust in ourselves more so now than ever. And the group of you that have tuned in to this channel, this frequency, you are light workers, you are trailblazers that are here to uplift and help others and inspire them by also you going on your own journey, by you discovering your talents, you know, your courage, your bravery, your intellect, your heart, because we're all in this together. And the 10 of cups reminds us that. Thank you so much, Collective. I am sending you tons and tons of love.